Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do some no line coloring. So here's a sample of what the no line coloring looks like. I'm gonna use the Memento Tuxedo Black ink just in case you don't have a no line coloring ink pad. You can also use a lighter shade, a gray or a tan. I'm gonna do a third generation stamping with this Memento Tuxedo Black ink to get the lines faded. That way when you color, the lines fade away. That's where the no line coloring word comes from. So I'm going to use this stamp here. This is our Pumpkin Spice Everything stamp set. I'm going to use the cute little hedgehog from our Critter Costume Party stamp set. I'm going to do some masking this time so I can mask the little hedgehog in front of the pumpkin. Since we're doing masking, we're going to want to stamp out what's going to be in front, and that is going to be our little hedgehog. So we're going to create a mask for him. I'm using the double, or I'm using the post-it notes that has the, the full adhesive. It's called Home Collection Post-it Brand, and it says Full Adhesive Note Refill. So this has the full adhesive on the back, except for this little piece here. Let's see, we can kind of line up our images. So I can get this all ready to go. So I'm going to want my pumpkin scene up here and then my little hedgehog right in between the coffee and the pumpkin. So now I'll cut him out. Just cut along the black line. Um, don't cut on the outside of the black line. You might get a white shadow around your image if you do that. So it's better to cut on the inside or right on the black line. Okay, we got our mask ready. Now what I'm going to do is stamp off three times. So I'll get a piece of scratch paper. There's one, two, and then the third time I'm going to stamp on our paper. Okay, so now you see it's very faded. But that's what we want. So now I'm going to mask out my little hedgehog here. We're going to grab our background stamp. Line that exactly where we want it. Now we'll go ahead and ink this up. Grab your scratch piece of paper. Stamp once. You could stamp it in the same area twice, but I just want you to see um, how it's stamping. Stamp twice. And then the third time. Okay, so now we have our image all ready to go. Take off our mask. So now we got the cute little hedgehog walking across here. Okay, so now for the colors that we're going to use. For this here, let's see if I can find the, something similar to what I used. Okay, so I grabbed these. We'll zoom in so you can get a snapshot of these colors. We'll start off with the orange. This is my brightest color, I believe. And 
what we can do is pretty much trace over the lines with your darkest uh, marker here. That'll help you. It does take some getting used to um, doing this no line coloring because there's no dark line for you to follow. Sometimes you go out of the lines like it just did there. So I do find tracing it does help with that. And now I'm just going to put my um, darkest shadows in. So I want the darkest shadows to be on each side of these little sections of the pumpkin. And now let's take out our YR15. And I'm going to blend out this color. So I'm going to go over what I just did. And the paper that I'm working with today is the Hammer Mill paper. I do have this listed in my Amazon store. So if you go in the description box, you'll see my affiliate links at the bottom and you'll see Amazon store. And this paper will be under paper. I do have things under different sections like tools, paper, coloring. So you'll find everything there. You'll find the stamp sets at nottoshabbyshop.com. This is the YR12. And now we're just going to blend these out. Try to leave a little bit of white space for the next color we have going on. So we're going to do two passes with each color. And then the third one is Y38. I like using this honey color. It brings out, it's like a golden color. I just love the way it looks. It brightens up your pumpkin. Okay, you can stop there if you want to, but I always like doing two coats. I think it just really just brings out everything. Like, you can see the difference here. This is with two coats, this is with one coat. So now we're going to do the YR68. And I'm just going to go back with these shadows here. And then at the bottom, I'm going to bring up some flicks. We'll darken up the bottom a little bit here. And we'll do some from the top. We're going to grab the YR24. This is a pale sepia. I do like using this to create some extra um, dimension or shadows or lines. I like to take this and just do some flicks. Take it in the little corners and flick down. Gives it some nice shadow and texture. 
So now let's take that Y38, that honey, and just glaze over this. Okay, so now we have our pumpkin. We can do the stem. You could choose a lot of different colors for the stem. You could do brown, greens. Um, I'm just gonna do green today. I have YG45 and YG41. And I'm just gonna outline with my darkest color here. And then go in with the YG41 and blend that out, the lines. Okay, now let's do it a second time. It's just gonna look a lot better once you do it twice. Okay, now we have our pumpkin done. I'm gonna try and push out the color where I went out of the line right here. So I just take the zero blender. This pushes the color back down into the cardstock. So grab some brown combinations for your acorn. I'm gonna use E97. E99 and E95. So E99 is my darkest. So I'll do the stem with that. And then I'm going to go over the line with this dark color. and then underneath. And I'm trying to draw on top of the line because I don't want the line to show as much. And I'm gonna save some white space for my third color for the bottom piece, which is E95. Okay, let's do his little pumpkin pail with some similar colors. So I'm going to grab that orange again. So let's see if I can get some similar colors going on. I know I used these three. We'll start off with that for his little pines. So E99. Let's just use this to go over our stamped image. So I'm coloring right over the line. Okay, I outlined my little hedgehog there, so I'll just take my mid-tone, which is the E97. And I'm just going to bring in this color and flick in some, some lines to look like his little pine 
pine needles. What are they called? His little, his little needles. So I'm going to go and bring these inward a little bit. So it looks like he has um, a lot of needles there. We'll do some on the other side, bringing them across so they kind of look like they're all connected. The E95, I'm just going to go over everything again and bring the colors out just a little bit more. You can leave some white space. And a color around the pumpkin. And now we're going to go back to E97. Here we're going to bring in those little flicks. Here you're going to want a very light hand. Try to do very thin strokes. Then we're going to go on the opposite side. And we'll take the E97. And bring those flicks in even more. Now the E95. Leave a little white space there. I did use, I think it was the honey, or maybe it was white R12. It was a yellowish color that I used. No, that one's too dark. Maybe it was the sepia. I think it was the sepia and I just brought this color in yes gave it kind of like a yellowish highlight and we have to do his arm so we can use um, E97 Oh no, for his arm, we're gonna use his body color here. And for his body, I think I used the um, E00. Let's see. With E11 and E33. So we'll take E33. kind of do the darkest areas of him. His little smile. And 
and then the E11. Okay, we'll leave the center for the E00. And I'm just blending this out. We can give him some rosy cheeks with the R20. And then his little nose, just pick a dark color. I'm gonna use E77. So we've got our little hedgehog done. Now we can work on the rest here. I'm going to play some music so you can watch the rest of the coloring and then we'll create a ground and a background. let's make a ground for this and maybe some trees in the background I want to stamp a like a Halloween jack-o-lantern face on this guy um, so it looks like some Halloween decor in the background um, the only thing I could find in my stash is this little face so I'm thinking about maybe stamping the eyes we'll see so let's do the ground I'm going to take a YR31. I'm going to start with a light color and just map out where I want the ground. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll just bring in some color. I 
We're gonna do a shadow under him and a shadow under here. And I could tell my marker is getting really dry. So I'm just going to build up the colors. This is YR12. And build up my shadows. Okay, now I'm going to bring in my browns. Got to E35. Okay, we'll blend that out with the E33. See, so I'll use my white R15. Some of this orange back in the brown. And my white art 12. Y21. So now I'm going to add some pebbles to the bottom and I think I'm going to use the not too shabby stamp from the fall gnomes. There's a great little pebble stamp in there. This one here and this one. So we could use that for texture and we can stamp with a brown color or an orange color, something that matches this ground. So I'm going to look through my stash. I got a Distress Oxide Vintage photo. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I think that's going to look good. Yeah, that looks great. So I'm going to cover up my little hedgehog so I could stamp the little rocks be underneath him. There, I think that looks really neat. For my trees, I'm going to use E70, E74, and E77. I'm going to start with the lightest and I'm just going to squiggle up some of these trees here. Okay, so let's get the next darkest color, the E74. I think more my light is probably better to be hit from this way rather than this way. So I'm gonna do the dark shade on the left. And then we'll go back and shade downward. So now we are at the E77. Thank you. 
And I'm just going to work my way down again. So E74, kind of shade those two colors together. And then go back with my E70. And the paper I'm using, um, I thought it was my hammer mill, but it's not. I don't really even think it's a really a Copic um, safe paper. So I noticed that it's not really blending that well. But I just kept going and I'm just going to make it work. You could see on this paper, this is um, the Georgia Pacific paper. The colors did blend a lot softer. I could tell on these trees that it's not blending like it usually does. So I have to really work at it. So I'm going to go back with the E74 and put it in some little um, grains, wood grains. So I'm just going to go lightly up and kind of like skip a little. Okay, and now I'll blend it out with the E70. So now they're starting to look more like trees. And then for the bottom, I forgot to do more of um, like a tree shape at the bottom. So I'm just going to fix that. Kind of so they look like they're coming out of the dirt. I guess I'm trying to say I forgot to draw in the roots. Okay, so now I'm going to draw some really skinny ones way in the back here. And I'm just going to use the two, E74 and E70, um, kind of just so they're faded. I want to think about a sentiment that I want to use for this. Okay, I found some sentiments. I'm going to do the boo from our Critter Costume Party stamp set and the Happy Halloween. But first I want to color the sky. I'm going to use my Spectrum Noirs because I don't use these often and they are starting to dry up. So I found two colors that weren't dry and I'm just going to color in the background with those.
going to use this LDRS Creative Hybrid Ink in Alloy. It's like a, a gray color. I didn't want it to be too dark. I do want to color it in and make it look like eyes on the pumpkin. I need my sentiment to stand out from the trees. So I'm going to stamp it out in this dark black ink. I'm going to use R14, which is a light rouge, and I'm going to use YR04. Now I'm going to take a white jelly roll pen and do some highlighting. Okay, that will complete my card. I'll just trim it out and add it to an A2 size folding card base. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. And I'll catch you real soon in the next video. Bye guys.